Picking the right drum sounds for your track is an absolutely essential skill, and I've made other videos on how you can select the right sounds, but what if we went one step further, and I told you how you could just straight up steal them from your favorite tracks? What? So in this video, I'm gonna show you three different examples of stealing both the kick drum and the snare drum, so I can use them in my own track. And don't worry, no one's gonna recognize the kick drum or the snare drum, but I know that they're gonna work perfectly for the style of music I'm making. Okay, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so first let's look at the setup and how we're gonna do it we've got three tracks here we've got one by Salatic, sub focus and one by cat dealers all in different genres so the first thing we want to be aware of is that we can very quickly run into clipping issues if we're dealing with tracks that have been mastered and they're at their peak volume so all i've done is take down each track by minus 12 db within the clip itself like so which will mean that we're not going to run into clipping issues quick note on the type of track you should use it's always best to use a high quality wave file if possible or aiff because the kick drum is such an important fundamental of your track it's good to have it in high quality and now let's show you the technique so first thing i want to do is find as clean a kick as possible within the track that takes some scrubbing around to find a place and it's rare that you'll find a kick just totally on its own if you do that's obviously great but usually towards the end or the beginning of the track, if you've got the extended mix, which I recommend, is where you're most likely to find a kick that has fewer elements playing with it. So here we can hear one that's pretty clean. There's obviously stuff going on, but now I'm going to zoom in close and I just want to actually just grab where the kick starts. We can see it starts here. We don't want to miss the beginning of the kick. So we'll just take that and we basically want to select half a beat's worth. So usually between the kick and the open hat. Because that's where the bass will start to play, that's where the open hat will start to play, and we only need that first beat. So now what I'm gonna do is just copy that onto another track. Let's just close these one up because we're not working with them yet. And then let's just paste it. And there we have a kick drum. I'm gonna get rid of this at the moment. And this is what we're gonna be working with. But if we listen to it, obviously we've got some issues because we can hear all the other sounds playing at the same time. We just want the kick drum. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this twice. We're going to have one of these kick drums be for the top, one for the thump of the kick, and then one for the sub bass of the kick as well. So this first one is going to be our sub. So I'm going to put an EQ on that, and I'm going to take out everything above, usually about 80 to 100 hertz, and we just want that rumble. So about 100 hertz I think is working well. And we can hear it's got this kind of weird sucking back sound at the very end. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So we can just take that off. And just smooth it off slightly. Next we need the knock of the kick because that's obviously thumpy and rumbly and that's all good but we need the rest of the kick. So now we can put an EQ on this middle one, roll off everything usually between about 100 hertz and then about 1k usually but again we're listening out for the thump. So that, oof, oof. So there sounds pretty good. But again, we can hear that's quite long. So we can take out quite a lot of this, usually to be about quarter of the beat, like so. And now the last one is to put an EQ on the final one. And this one we can really shorten usually, and we'll just take out everything apart from the top kick. and we can make this run really quite short. Cool, so now when all of them play together, we have got our kick. Pretty cool, huh? But it's important to now treat this properly so we can get the absolute most from it. So here's what I do next, okay? Let's just create a new channel and I'm going to choose the input to be resample and we want this to be maximized so we've got the best volume from it. So before we resample it, let's go to the master channel. And you can see because they're all a lower volume, it's quite quiet. We want that to be up to zero. So I'm gonna use the Pro L2. It's my favorite limiter, so I put it on the master channel and we basically want to get this up so we're just tickling zero. We don't really want any gain reduction. And I'll turn down the monitoring here so I don't deafen you. So you can see we're just tickling the tiniest bit of gain reduction. And now 
Let's resample that into our track. So we choose resampling, monitor it, and then hit record. One kick, boom. Now, the reason we've done that is because we want it to be normalized to zero dB, but also this allows us to make it even better sometimes than the track from which we sampled it. So if we have a look here, we can see this part here actually looks louder than the initial transient. And it's very rare where you would ever want that to be the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to about where it's crossing over at zero, and I'm going to just increase the volume, and I've split that now. I'm gonna increase the volume of this a little bit, and you can clip it a tiny bit. We'll turn off the master processing because we don't want this to be limited again. And now let's just increase the volume of this one a little bit. And now I'm going to just fade these two together to make it a smooth transition. So it's a very subtle difference, but it's the difference between this and this. So it's just giving our transient the maximum volume that we possibly can. So that's how you do it in a nutshell. And then at this point, I would literally just export that at 24 bits a wave, and then I would save it into my favorites. So let's try that again. In fact, let's not try that again. Let's first go and try and get the snare drum. Now this one's a bit trickier and you're not always going to be able to get it exactly how you want, but it still can be pretty useful. So again, we want to find somewhere where there are a few elements playing with the snare, if possible. Okay, it's not playing yet, not playing yet. Okay, this is, this should make our job easier because there's no kick drum either. So we're gonna, again, just get that one beat of a snare like so, paste that into our own channel. And then, much like with the kick, we just need to EQ out everything that we don't want. But with the snare, you can usually do it with just one layer. Let's try it with two and see if we can get an even better result. So firstly, let's shape it properly. We'll duplicate that. And then we'll try two EQ moves. Now we don't need a rumble because there's no low end in the snare, but we'll take out the mid first. because we want to try and get rid of some of that tonality and just keep the snap. And then for the second one, let's take out some of the low end. But that's where the power of the kick is, just about that point, 200 hertz or so. And now let's take out some of that other stuff. So maybe actually three will be a good amount for this one. So we can get the third one and then see if we can get that snap in the middle. And again, much like the kick, we would then resample that, make sure it's at zero dB, so normalized, and then we can use that snare in our track. And it's gonna fit pretty well with the kick that we've just sampled. So now let me give you two more examples of using this, but with different genres, just to show you that it can still work. So we're gonna go for a sub-focus track, which is drum and bass. Now, unfortunately, there's no extended mix of this, so it's much harder because there's no area where the drums are playing with fewer elements. Well, getting the snare would be pretty easy. There sounds like a good place. So again, we just want to get the kick. This is a bit of a rough cut, but it's fine because what I'm gonna do is just tighten it up a little bit. So let's take that down and let's make sure it's kind of hitting the right place. Tighten it up like so. And again, let's just duplicate it twice. We can get rid of the original track now. Get our EQ on there. This is gonna be the low end rumble, so take out everything over about 100 hertz. There's our thump. Let's just 
bring this over to a sensible place and loop it. It's ideal to set up the template in the same tempo as your track, but we haven't done that just for speed. So there's our boom. Now let's get the knock. Here's the knock. I'm going to take out that roll off around the same place that we rolled off the high end before. So we want this knock. And then the high. So again, we'll put an EQ on, take out the low end. This can be a lot shorter, just the transient. All together. And again, we just resample that, maximize it, boom, Bob's your uncle. Okay, last track is Cat Dealers and some other people. And it's a tech house track, so let's just listen to that. Nice kick there. Let's go to the end and see if we can hear. No, it's bass line playing all the way through, that's okay. We're gonna choose one that doesn't have the clap playing over it though. Yeah, half a beat long. We can bring this into our own track, or as it's our last example, we just leave it on the main track itself. We'll go and loop that. Let's make sure it's right at the transient. These details are very important. We want that transient hit at the very beginning of our kick. So let's just duplicate this twice. Boom. Let's get the rumble. Take that out. Get the knock in the mid-range one or low mids. Make that a bit shorter so we don't hear the bass. Like so. And then the high end. Let's just get that high end tick for the top kick. We could tighten this up a bit. I actually quite like that slightly longer delay there, that longer release rather. And now we've got our kick. We tighten it up if we want. We've got our own options here now. We can make it our own. And then we resample it, normalize it, export it, boom, Bob's your uncle. I really hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. It's very useful if you struggle to match the kicks or get kicks sounding as good as your reference track. Sometimes the results are gonna be better than other times, depending on the track that you choose. But I always recommend download the high quality wave version of that project. One, it supports the artist. And two, you're gonna get a better end result. And then try and find the extended version if at all possible. And you can download my ultimate favorites kick pack that I've collected over 25 years you can get it for free below this video with some rock solid kicks to get you started straight away and if you want to find out how to select the perfect kick for your track every time don't forget to watch that video it's super important if you want to match your kick with your bass thank you so much for watching i'll catch you over there